In today's video, I'll be wrapping up my front of book 2021 bullet journal setup and starting on spreads for January. By the way, hi, I'm Emily. In case this is your first time visiting my channel, I mostly post Zentangle videos, but recently decided to add a little bullet journaling to the mix, which will likely still include plenty of Zentangling. I have a chronic illness though, and rarely do anything strictly by the book. So if my bullet journaling process feels a little unorthodox, that's probably because it is, and has to be. To start, I'm going back to page one. I left it blank in my intro video because I wasn't sure what I wanted to try there. If you've already seen my unboxing slash intro video, you are probably aware I'm not doing any kind of theme. Well, unless the theme is just like my first bullet journal. Another tidbit about me. I am impatient, as evidenced here. The ink wasn't dry enough before I started removing the masking fluid so it tore. I just touched it up with a micron and it's good enough for me. When I did give the ink enough time to dry though, the masking fluid and washi tape were easy to remove. Nothing wrong with the supplies, if you're wondering, um, it's all on me as the user. I'm still learning when it comes to applying the masking fluid, so some of these areas have a sketchy look to them. I kind of like it to be honest, um, but for getting a more consistent mask, the application tool that came with the liquid frisket isn't working the best for me. Not sure if I just need more practice or if I need to give something else a try. For my first bullet journal, I wanted the freedom to make the inside as haphazard as I am. Tracking through life with brain cancer and disability doesn't look organized and planned, and I don't mind my journal reflecting that. left the page before my year at a glance calendar blank for a bit before I decided to add these sections. I'm using a mix of Micron, Jelly Roll, and Acrylograph pens if you're wondering. The top box is basically a designated place for me to list bigger events um, throughout the year and the one for gift ideas just seemed like it might be useful here because I rarely have a good gift idea at the same time I'm actually ready to make a purchase. As is usual around here, if you're curious about any of the art supplies I use in this video, you'll find a list of materials with links in the description. This next spread is my brain dump page. I'm dividing it into sections for ideas I have related to my Instagram posts, YouTube videos, blog posts, and Patreon content. That'll help me sort and prioritize those things as I go. Then at the bottom, in the section above the title, there's still some room for miscellaneous items. It's like my junk drawer for the ideas I want to keep, but that don't fit neatly in any other category. I chose watercolors and ink for this brain doodle and later went back to add some Zentangle embellishments to the social media doodles. That's how this is going to work for me, by the way. Um, a lot of times I can't or don't want to complete a page in a single setting, so my pages might look a little different every time you see them.
This next page is a master checklist for me when I'm creating a YouTube video. There are a lot of steps to getting it done right, but I easily get distracted and lost in the details. So I was losing a lot of time having to retrace my steps, and I figured I'd give this a try. My goal is to remember to do the things that will actually help me make the channel better. I might try turning the YouTube checklist into a printable notepad or something later so I can mark it up for each video that I do. Anyway, feel free to pause the video when I show the full page and copy my list if you think it could help you. The time I spent making it has already been worth it after just a couple of videos. I'm getting more efficient, economizing my steps, and that's a huge bonus for someone with a chronic illness. If you have one, you know what I mean. Economy of steps, literal and figurative steps, is an absolute necessity. The checklist page needed a little something, so I grabbed some watercolor pencils in rainbow colors and a water brush to dress up the headers and make this more fun to look at. The next page is a space for me to do a little hashtag research for my Instagram post. Instagram isn't ever going to be my main focus, but I do want to up my game a little and be more intentional there if possible. Hopefully I can connect with more Zentangle fans. Speaking of Zentangle, I did some tangling on this page using the pattern poke group. Most of the drawing I did off camera as I felt up to it, but at the end of this clip here, you'll get to see how it all turned out. And of course, it's not one of my videos unless Izzy comes along and tries to disrupt my workflow. Eventually she ran away, I just used my really annoying kitty voice and told her how much I loved her over and over and she was like, okay, I'm out. Now I'm finally getting into my monthly pages for January. On the left is the monthly calendar with a space for me to drop in some notes. 
After inking with a micron, I whipped out my metallic colors and painted the headers. This rose gold metallic paint is my favorite color of the bunch. I think I could put it on everything. On the right, I've set up some boxes for tracking stuff. Taxes, income, expenses, meals, a shopping list. It's very basic, but I wanted to be able to fit all of these things on one page, so there wasn't a lot of room left for embellishing. I am especially proud of myself for leaving a spot to track my tax documents as they come in. Once I finish my taxes, I plan to come back to this page and add my 2020 adjusted gross income at the bottom of that section. It seems like every time I apply for assistance, whether it's like Medicare or SSDI or whatever, I always need that number. This year, I'm running it down so I don't have to reset three dozen passwords and search a gazillion folders on my computer to find it. And I'm feeling pretty pleased with myself for thinking of putting it there. Tracking for the other stuff may or may not be helpful to me long term, but I wanted to give it a try. I can always omit this layout in the future if it's not working for me. Once the metallic watercolor was dry on the left side, I went back to finish that page up. My intent was to leave the first row of unnumbered boxes open, like on the bottom row, but I messed that up. But I'm applying the no mistakes in Zentangle rule to my journal setup too, and I just went with it and mirrored a little pattern on the boxes. I don't know if it's the tumor or what, but mirrored patterns kind of break my brain. This was good practice for me. The sped up in the time lapse here, it looks a little like I knew what I was doing, but there were actually, actually a lot of boring pauses. Next are some very basic weekly setups for me to track daily tasks and accomplishments. I plan to write down anything I get done here that's not on my list of intended tasks. Again, with the chronic illness thing, planning a daily to-do list isn't really something I can commit to because of the dynamic nature of disability. What I can do today, I can't count on being able to do tomorrow. So seeing what I did manage to accomplish will remind me not to get down on myself for, you know, quote, doing nothing. I'm not lazy. I'm just always assessing and adjusting based on what my body will allow. The next page is a tracker for a couple of meds and symptoms I want to track on a daily basis. I think I will just have to show you in a future video how I track these things because it's hard to explain how I intend to use it while it's blank. Uh, but just overall, the plan is to track how my meds and my mood and my chronic pain are all influencing each other. Um, maybe some pattern will emerge and I'll learn there are things I can tweak to improve my overall quality of life. 
And even if that doesn't happen, when my doctors ask me how things have been going, I can tell them what I've recorded instead of trying to remember and summarize the last month or two of my life. That's always a struggle for me. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Also, in case you're wondering what I plan to do with all the open space at the top right of my weekly spreads, it's a really great size for adding a Zentangle. I'm just saying. Stay tuned. Okay, and here's what my first bullet journal looks like so far. There's one simple spread in here that I didn't show because it's so basic. It's just for me to dump some notes and ideas down during December without doing a whole lot of setup for just a few days. And that wraps up my January 2021 bullet journal setup. If you like this improvised plan with me video and want to be notified when I post new ones, be sure to subscribe and then click on the bell icon to turn on push notifications. I will also keep posting more Zentangle centric videos here as well. As we gear up to welcome 2021, I want to take a moment to thank all the patrons who have supported me at any point this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!